So last week, the topic was, we have the answer. Well, this is part two of that same message. We have the answer, part two. But the subtitle for today's message is, God is waiting on us. God is waiting on us. And my brothers and sisters, you may not really understand what I'm say, I mean when I say that. You may not understand what it is God is trying to get us to understand. But I hope by the end of the message, you will and you will take action to make sure that you are involved in what God is doing at this time. You know, there's a song that is out there that says, Lord, whatever you're doing, doing in this season, don't do it without me. That should be our prayer right now. That should be your prayer right now because God is doing something, but we who know him, who have spiritual a spiritual connection with God, should be able to see the big picture and not just what is happening on ground level. Amen? So we, my brothers and sisters, let's do a quick recap of where we were last week so that we will know exactly what God is saying to us, okay? So last week we looked at a few scriptures. And um, to try and understand what God is expecting from his people in these troubling times. And um, we looked at Isaiah chapter 5, verses 6 and 11. Now I'm going to read these scriptures, not going to go into it in any real level of depth. Okay, not in any real depth. But um, I'm going to read these scriptures so that we can actually understand what God is saying in these times. So we looked at Isaiah chapter 5, 55, and we started off uh, at verse 6. I'm going to read the scripture so you can hear it, and then I'm going to just touch on it slightly, okay? He says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, your ways my ways, say the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return it not thither, but water it the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where, with, where to I sent it. Now, there's something I want you to notice here in this particular verse that we all like to quote. And remember last week, I mentioned this several times. One of the problems with the body of Christ, with people who go to church, churches, okay, is the fact that they've taken the word of God and they've turned it into cliches. They're not using the word of God with any form of depth, understanding, okay, or power. They quote scriptures just like that. It just slips off their mouth. Just like the people out in the world who, who, when you say something to them, they just curse at you. Christians or people who go to church, because real Christians would not do that. But people who go to church and know a few pieces of word, they find themselves just using the word of God as a cliche. My brothers and sisters, the word of God is powerful. It is powerful. It is like a two-edged sword. It is sharp. It's effective. Okay? The Word of God is able to accomplish things. So don't use it as some sort of a byword or something of the sort. Okay? Use it for the purpose for which God sent it. That's what he said. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I sent it. I want you to notice something here. In this particular verse, you find that God said, I shall. It shall, in fact. It shall not return to him void. One. It shall accomplish that which he pleases. Two. It shall prosper in the thing wherein he sent it. Every time he says, it shall, he's saying that something is going to happen because the word that he has sent forth 
has the ability to change things. It is an effective word that should reach the hearts, souls, and minds of God's people. And as we do that, my brothers and sisters, we share God's word and we do it with sincerity and with truth. We are putting the word of God out into the atmosphere. We are allowing it to be able to get into the ears, hearts, souls, and minds of people around us. It has the ability to accomplish what God has sent it. It has the ability to prosper in everything that he has sent it to do. We have to be able to take the word of God and be able to send it out into the atmosphere. Amen? Okay, so that's the foundation. We understand now when we look at this word, every time God speaks a word, every time we share a word that God has spoken, we are activating it. It's like a cell phone. You can use it and use it and use it, and it runs down, it becomes dead. What do you do? You charge it up again. And when you charge it up again, guess what? You could use it. The Word of God should never ever in us, human beings, who are called by God's name, find out itself having run out of power, run out of its effectiveness. We have to be able to let the Word of God accomplish what it sent it for. Amen? Do you use a cell phone to do what? To communicate, either by text, by email or by voice. The word of God, my brothers and sisters, should be used in the same way to be able to communicate to people around us what God, our God, has to say to the world. Amen. So now let's go back now to our main area of scripture. Back to 2 Chronicles 7.14. 2 Chronicles 7.14. And you'll find that we're going to be there for a while. Okay. Now, last week, I know I went over an hour. I apologize to those of you who stayed through the whole thing. I really do. It wasn't intentional. It's just that when I stand behind the world, behind a, a, a podium, a pulpit, or whatever, any time I stand to preach God's word, the excitement inside of me makes me lose track of time. I think just like how Peter was praying, was um, preaching in that, you know, in that building um, back in the, the book of Acts, when he was preaching so long that the young man fell, man fell asleep and he fell down from the, the, the rafters. But I want you to know, I love God. I love his word and I love sharing his word with his people. So now let's look at Second Chronicles. Okay. And last week when we look at Second Chronicles, we saw certain things, right? We went to Second Chronicles and we looked from verse 12 to verse 15 again. 2 Chronicles 7.14, another word that people like to use as a cliche. But God's word is not a cliche. I want you all to get that. I want you all to understand that. It is not a cliche. So let's start to look at the word of God and understand what it is. God sent it to prosper, to accomplish, to do what he wants it to do. Let's use it as a tool because that's what God sent it to us for. He gave it to us for, to use it as a tool to bring people closer and into relationship with him. So let's look now. In verse 12 last week, we see God responding to Solomon and declares that he has heard his prayers. Look at this now, okay? And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. And I've chosen this place for myself and house of sacrifice. God is telling someone, I heard your prayer. Remember last week we talked about it? Chapter 6, the whole of chapter, chapter 6, basically all of the scripture, the word in chapter 6, is a prayer by Solomon. He's praying to God. And in that prayer, he makes seven petitions to God on behalf of the people of Israel. Seven. Talk about that. Seven, we know, for those of us who understand the word of God, is the number of completion or completeness. Okay? So he made seven requests to God. And as he made those seven requests to God, God now comes to Solomon because you have to understand, Solomon was not asking for himself. Solomon was actually praying and asking God to help the people to respond to the situations that the people can go through. And as Solomon prayed that prayer, he got God's attention. When you see God said, I have heard thy prayer. See that word heard there in that particular sense? 
In that, in that verse here, that word here means, I got, you got my attention, Solomon. You got my attention. And that's what God is saying to us right now. I want you to pray a prayer that will get my attention. Because when you pray a prayer that gets my attention, I will respond to it. I will act upon your prayer. Amen? So, that's what God responds to Solomon in verse 12. In verse 30 now, God uses ifs. Okay? He uses the word ifs. If three times. It's a hypothetical situation. This if in this particular sense here is used in a hypothetical situation. Here's what he's saying. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, one. If I command the locusts to devour the land, two. If I send pestilence upon my people, that's the third if. Again, we know three is another important number to God. It represents a trinity. God is saying to Solomon, even though he made seven petitions in the sixth chapter, God says out of those, yeah, he uses three of them. Look at what the first one he says. If I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, in other words, I'm going to bring a drought. Okay? If I command the lo locusts to devour the land, that there be no food. If I Send pestilence, which means there will be sickness and disease upon the land. God uses these as hypotheticals. And when he uses them as hypotheticals, it is really a, a, a rhetorical statement he's making to Solomon. Solomon has no answer for this. Just like you and I. Right now, we don't have an answer for the virus that's going around. Neither, neither does, the, neither does the, um, the medical professionals out there. Let me rephrase this. We have an answer for what's going around. But in our naturalness, we don't. We cannot answer to God. But we have an answer that the world needs and the world could use right now. And that answer is Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, so now we look at that, right? So we look at 12 and we look at 13. Wrapping up for last week now. Okay. Then we jump into 14. And 14 is the one that a lot of people like to to quote, people, a lot of people like to, to hear, a lot of people like to hear, thank you, honey. Um, people talk about this, you know, and we use it when we're talking about having revivals and when we're talking about, um, you know, gathering together or situations come around. We say, we, we like to quote this, again, like a, another cliche. If my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen? I want you to understand something here. I really and truly want you to understand something here. In this particular verse, we find some things are being said here. God uses one if in this response. But this if is a conditional if. God is saying, if I do these things in verse 13, how about if you do these things that I'm going to ask you to do in verse 14? I'm saying, if I shut up the heaven, there'll be no rain. If I send the locusts, so there'll be no crops. If I send pestilence, so there'll be sickness and disease upon the land. How about if my people, I give you my ifs, they're hypothetical. But I'm not giving you a hypothetical response. I'm not asking you to give me a hypothetical response. I'm asking you to give me a genuine response, a real response. If you will do these things or accomplish these four principles that we dealt with last week, you're going to get a response from me. Because guess what? When Solomon was praying and asking God, he was using seven ifs as well. He said, Lord, if the people will turn away from you, if they will share blood, if they will do this, if the locusts come on the land, if the enemies come in and, 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 and to try and devour us. Solomon put his ifs out there and God comes back with his own ifs. My brothers and sisters, you've got to understand, God never asks us to do anything that he's not willing to do himself. And if we ask God to do something, I want you to know somewhere in the world you'd realize that God has already 
cover that area of your if. Of your if. So here we go again. We look into it now. I know we touched on it last week. And I told you I wasn't going to do a very deep exegesis of it. Exegesis. Okay? I said it again. My town. Exe I said exegesis, but it's not exegesis. It's exegesis. Okay? So here's what we, we have to understand now. Is we understand. <laughs> I, I'm going to share this with you, and I hope that you're willing and ready to hear what God said to me last week, Sunday evening, after I ministered to you. As I spent my time just relaxing, I looked, I watched the message that I had ministered last week over again. And after that, I went and I sat down and watched some Christian television because I wanted to keep my mind focused on the Word of God. And God ministered this to me. God said this to me, and I'm going to share this with you, and I hope that you are able to grasp what God said to me as I share it with you. Amen? Listen to this. When God starts off in verse 14, and he says, If my people, which are called by my name. In that little portion of that scripture there, God has my twice. And he wants us to understand when he uses my there, he's putting my as an attachment of a title. Look what he says now. If my people are we God's people, how do we know we are God's people? Some of us use this phrase, I'm water baptized, I'm, I'm, I'm baptized, water, fire baptized, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. We say these things, but are we truly what we say we are? We are God's people when God has saved our soul through our acceptance of his son, Jesus Christ. We become his people. We become a part of his family. Because when God spoke to Abraham, he told him, now when I, when after he gave him the prayer, he said, and through this, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. Through you, my brothers and sisters, God wants to bless the nations of the world. So look at this now. Look at this now. He said, if my people, he's calling you. He's calling you. Okay? He's calling you his. He has adapted you and brought you into his family. No, he goes and he says, which are called by my name. You're going to understand. You're going to understand what he's saying here. You are his people. We are his people. We are called by his name. And the name that we go by in this modern time is not Jew like the Jews were called the people of God in the Old Testament times. We are called Christians in the modern time because we are called by the name of his son, Christ. Amen? Okay. Someone asked for the scripture, I'm sorry. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Old Testament. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. All right? So we go back now on what we say. If my people, God is saying this now. God is saying this. Brothers and sisters, listen. God is saying this. If my people, the ones I call my people, the ones to whom I've attached my name. Okay, we're going to this now. Let's, let, let's look at this. Let's look at this. If my people who are called by my name, in the Hebrew, that word name there means by my repetition. My repetition. The people of the world, in the days of the Jews, they knew that the, the God of the Israelites had a reputation for being a God that was a protector God, a God that was a provider God, a God that was a God that would took, took care of his people, their, his reputation. Okay? His reputation. You can understand that's what God is saying. I want you to know that when I attach my name to you, you are going forth in my reputation. And you're called by my name. You have my authority. Look at this here now. He says, Yes, now. 
my name, my authority. Listen on, brothers and sisters. I have a cousin. He's li he lives in Washington, D.C. right now. He's the ambassador of Trinidad and Tobago to the United States, the OAS, and the United Nations. But when they picked him to come to be the ambassador, they picked him because he was a good example of what Trinidad was all about. So when he comes to America and he has to speak to the president, he has to go to the United Nations and speak on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago, he is able to speak with the full authority of the prime minister, the president, and the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. When God has called you his people and he has put his name upon you, what God is saying to you is that I have given you the authority because you represent me here on the earth as if I were here myself. You are the representation of heaven here on the earth. So with that, my brothers and sisters, come authority. We have the authority to speak on behalf of God because we are his people. We are ambassadors for Christ, as Paul will say. So now we have the responsibility, my brothers and sisters, of sharing the word of God and using the word of God to bring about an effective movement in the earth. Because we are being backed by heaven. There's something else now the Lord showed me. I want to share with you. Something else the Lord showed with me. So as we go to this verse now. He comes and he talks about. What are the four principles that we should exercise? What are the four principles that we should do? He talks about them. They're simple things. When we think about them. And I'll explain to you what, why we say. I say it's simple. Because it is simple. Because the day that you became a child of God, when you became a new creature, when all things passed away, and behold, everything became new in your life, you were supposed to be a humble child of God. Just like Jesus. He humbled himself even to the cross, to the death of the cross. He humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. So my brothers and sisters, when you have pastors and preachers out there who are trying to build their own kingdom on the earth, we've got to be careful because they're not humbled in the sight of God. And we've got to be humble in the sight of God. So he said, if my people who are called by my name, who have my authority on them, will humble themselves, recognize that I am God and they are not, and they will pray, they will call on me, and that word pray in this particular sense here means to intercede and to become an intercessor. Jesus is saying to us, I was on the earth. And when I walked about the earth, everywhere I went, people came gathering around me. And as people came around me, gathering around me, they were coming because they wanted to experience the love, the power, and the majesty of God. But guess what, my brothers and sisters? I just told you all that you are ambassadors for Christ. You are ambassadors for Christ. So when you walk upon the earth, you have the ability to walk just like Jesus walked on the earth. You have the authority to be able to speak a thing that is not as if it were. You have the authority to lay hands on the sick and see them recover because that's what God said in his word. We have the authority. We have the authority. So get this now. So, humble ourselves, pray, seek his face. Seek his face. We gotta learn to seek God's face. Not our face. Not the president's face. Not Congress's face. Not, not, not the, the Queen of England's face. Not the, 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 the leader of the United Nations face. Nobody else's face but the face of Jesus. The face of God. We have to go there and make petitions. Look at this now. Look at this. Look at this. Okay? We have to be able to intercede or intervene. Okay? On behalf of people when we pray. We have to seek God's face or to be choir of God, to desire things of God. Okay? Seek to be in His presence because when you're in the presence of God, everything is going to be all right. When you're in the presence of God, 
all of the things that God has available is available to you. When you're in the presence of God, the anointing and the power and the love and the mercy of God is available to you. And we then become conduits of that, my brothers and sisters. We, are, we become conduits of that. God will pour it into us so we can pour it out to others. Amen? Amen? Just touch the, the button and let us know that, we, that you're falling with us, okay? Just let us know. Let us know that you are getting this word and understanding the word. But like I said, if I'm talking too fast, just type slow, okay? I'll follow you. Amen. Okay, so now let's look at this now. And the last one he says here now, he said, and turn from their wicked ways. And turn from their wicked ways. My brothers and sisters, that is one of the hardest things for the natural carnal man to do. It's one of the, the hardest things for the carnal man to do. But it should not be hard for a person who says that they are a child of God to do. It should not be a hard thing to do. I want to say this to you. And I've said it many, many years as I was pastoring and preaching and so on. The difference between doing right and wrong is the same. It is no easier to do the, no harder to do the right thing than it is hard to do the wrong thing. It is not harder. It's just a matter of choice. And we are coming to that word now that God really laid on my heart that he wants me to share with you. So what are the four principles? Humble yourself. Pray. Seek its face. Turn from your wicked ways. He said, when you accomplish these four principles, when you've done these four things, then I will hear from heaven. Notice this now. Look at this now. Look at this. Look at this, my brothers and sisters. Okay? I want you to see this now. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven. When you've accomplished these four things, Brothers and sisters, listen, as we go through our Christian journey, as we live our lives as believers in Jesus Christ, as we go around there and we try to share this word, we have to have a boldness in us. We have to have a boldness in us. Because we have heaven back in us. We've got heaven back in us. Can I give you an illustration? The little boy was in the play field, playing with his friends. Well, all of a sudden, another guy came along and he started to beat him up. And every day for a whole week, this guy just was picking on this guy because he had a lot of friends and people liked him. And one day, he, went, he was walking home and he was crying. And as he was walking home, someone walked alongside him and said, little boy, why are you crying? He said, because every day after school, these kids are picking on me. This particular boy, he just like to beat me up. and He's a bully and he's bullying me. And the person said to him, don't worry, young man. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. The next day, the little boy went to school. And he's coming home after playing with his friends and so on. And he sees the bully. And he stands up and he starts to laugh at the bully. And the police say, what's wrong with you? Okay, every day, you know, I'm going to whoop you today just like I whoop you every other day. And the little boy stood up right there and he started to laugh. Because in the corner of his eyes, he saw someone coming towards him. The same person who spoke to him the day before and said, don't worry about the little boy. All of a sudden, standing up behind the little boy was his big brother. Six foot four, muscle bound, standing up with his hands on the shoulder of his little brother. My brothers and sisters, I want you to do that right now. Jesus is saying to you, I am your big brother. I've got my hands on you. And it doesn't matter what the world sends against you, what the world tries to do to you. I want you to know that I've got your back. Jesus is saying, I've got your back, my brothers and sisters. So when you understand that you are his people who are called by his name, when you understand that you have the power and authority of heaven flowing with you and moving with you, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No tongue that rises up against you. Listen to everyone will be condemned. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. We've got to understand that God wants us to know he is waiting on us because the world is in need of an answer. The world needs a cure. 
the world needs help. But we are his people. Here now is what God laid upon me. And I want you to understand. When God said, you are my people who are called by my name. Huh? God is saying, I am putting my integrity on the line. I'm putting my integrity on the line. My name represents my integrity. Because when I say something, we just look at Isaiah 55. You see, when I say something, I want you to understand what I say. My word will not come back to me void. It will accomplish that that I sent it to do. It will do what I please it. My brother and sister, God is saying, if my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I will hear from heaven. Why am I going to hear? Because you represent me. You represent me here on the earth. I'm telling you, my name is on the line. My integrity is on the line. And I'm telling you, go forth in my name and speak the truth of God. Get yourself together with other believers. I know right now we are supposed to do social distancing. But thank God, thank God for technology that right now, right now, thank you. That right now. Thank you, Sister Marshall. Right now, we may not be able to get within six feet of each other, but technology has allowed us to be able to still connect. God is a wise God. And my brothers and sisters, this world is a living world. This world is an active world. God is saying, my integrity is at stake. Guess what? I have a lot of people on my Facebook page who are agnostics, atheists, and unbelievers. And I've thought about many times of unfriending them. But I won't. Because whenever I do a post, I'm able to bend my head and say, Lord, please forgive them. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And you know that right now, people have started to say things like, well, where's the God of the Christians? Why do we have this problem with this disease? Why doesn't he act? Why doesn't he do something? Why doesn't he you know, change this? Why doesn't he have them find a cure? Guess what, my brothers and sisters? Guess what? God is waiting on you. God is waiting on me. God is waiting on all of us to do what he said here. He said this word will not return to him void. This word will not return to him void. It will accomplish. And God is waiting on you so that we can do what he said to do so it can accomplish what he sent it to do. That's what it is. God's name is on the line. People are out here saying that God is not good. God is not real. God is not a loving God. God is not a kind God. People are out there criticizing our God, condemning our God. But why are they doing that? Because we are not doing what he said we should do. Do you get that? Do you understand that? God is saying, my people, you call by my name. You are my ambassadors here on the earth. Get together and begin to pray. I thank those of you who spent the time last week with us. Reading the scriptures as we feast on the scriptures. Today is a holy convocation. We're going to pray at the end of this message. Because we're going to ask God to really intervene. Amen? We're going to ask God to intervene. But here's what I want you to know and understand. God loves us. But God is waiting on us to do what he said. It's not hard. It's right here. Don't cliche this word. Don't cliche this word. Use this word as a weapon. Use this word as a force. Use this word as an effective tool that God has given us to be able to bring people into the knowledge of God, the understanding of God, and let God do the rest. What is the rest? Look what he said now. He said, then will I hear from heaven? I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. But how would he do that, my brothers and sisters, if we don't humble ourselves, if we don't pray, if we don't seek his face, if we don't turn from our wicked ways? Why would he do it? He said, when you do these things, then I will do this. That's what God is saying to us. When you do these four things, then I will do this. Now, I know some of you out there, will say, well, 
How am I sure that God is going to hear my prayer? How am I sure that God hears my prayer? Well, first of all, you've got to be his, one of his people. You've got to be one of his ambassadors. You've got to have his name upon you. Amen? His seal upon you. If you're not, we're going to pray so that you can become a part of the family pretty soon. Amen? But that's what it is. For those of you who know, like the old people used to say, who know and you know that you know that you are a child of God. Huh? Those of you who know that you're a child of God, that you are one of his people, you are called by his name, you ought to know that when you pray to God, he's going to hear your prayers. How many of you out there right now could say, I'm a child of God? Just touch the button and let us know. How many of you out there right now could say, you, you, you can't raise your hand because I can't see it, but if you touch the button on the screen, people will, you know, we will know that you are getting this message. Okay? How many of you can say, I am a child of God. I am called by his name. Because now I can say with authority and the confidence that I can go and I can pray and ask God to do something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Oh, praise the Lord. Go with me. Remember last week we had some scriptures we were reading? We were reading some scriptures last week. And one of the, one of the, the scriptures that we read as part of our spiritual meal, our spiritual feast, was 1 John. Go to chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. We are going to verse 14 and 15. 1 John chapter 5. Right? Just before, down to the back of the Bible, you have Revelation is the last book, you have Jude, and then you have 3 John, 2 John, and we're going to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. Last chapter in 1 John. Okay? Let's go there now. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Oh, 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 oh. how you want to be sure that God is hearing you? If you're a child of God, you don't have to worry if God is hearing you, because guess what I'm going to say? Like I said last week, God hears everything that we say. Whether it's a prayer, it's a curse word, or whatever it is, God hears everything we say. God also hears all the prayers we pray. But all the prayers that are prayed in the world don't get God's attention. If you notice when we look back in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, uh, verse 12, God said to Solomon, I have heard your prayer. I've heard your prayer. And the reason why God heard his prayer is because the prayer he prayed was an intercessory prayer, a prayer petition, not for self, but for others. So when we get together and we try to understand what God is requiring of us in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he said, if my person, if my child, if my son, if my daughter, no, he said, if my people, the gathering of people, the called out bunch, those who recognize that God is God and he's eternal. Those who God, God is saying uh, have my authority, my ambassadors, my representatives here on the earth. Those, we can now say. And this is the confidence that we have in him. <laughs> that if we ask anything according to his will, he here it does. My brothers and sisters, we can have confidence in God because, listen, I don't know how old some of you are, but I know how old I am. And I can give you testimonies maybe for a whole month, 10, 10 hours a day of all the things God has done for me. And it may take more than one month because God has been so good to me all my life. I've seen situations where I know it was God and God alone who brought me through. And because I prayed, mm, when I prayed and he answered, I have confidence in him more and more to keep on praying. Yeah. Let me tell you all something. This might sound crazy. My mother-in-law, Bessie Johnson, she had Alzheimer's. But she used to get headaches when she was staying with us. She used to get headaches. 
And every time she got a headache, she would look across to me and she'll say, I have a headache. And I'll be sitting on right next to her. And I'll lay my hand on her forehead and I'll pray for her. And after I pray for her, she'll take my hand and she'll rub it in her face. And she'll say, thank you. And she will say this to me. She had Alzheimer's. I want you to understand what I'm saying. She will say to me, every time you pray, God heals me. Hallelujah. Do you understand? That, that give me more confidence to keep on praying to God. If a person with Alzheimer's could say to me, every time I prayed for her, God healed her. That gives me more boldness to go before his throne all the time. And that's what God is saying to us in his world here. Listen to it. We're going to wrap this up because I promise you it won't be too long today. It won't be too long today. So look at what he says now. Look at what he says now. Okay. When we understand what he's saying here, if my people... Or cover my name, he said now in verse first John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is a confidence or the boldness or the guarantee. Understand that? Or the guarantee that we can have in him that if we ask anything according to his will or in agreement with his will, my brothers and sisters, what more could be in agreement with God's will? First and second Chronicles 7:14. When God himself says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. What more confidence do we have that that's according to his will? But look at the verse 15 now. We're never going to verse 15. We're coming to the end. We're coming to the end. But just bear with me a few more minutes. In verse 15, verse 15 of 1 John 5, 15 now, my brothers and sisters. 1 John 5, 15. What does it say? And we know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We know. That's what, what John says. John is saying, and we know that he hears us. That he hears. And if we know that he hears us. Another if. Another if. He said, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Oh, yes. Here it is. God is waiting on us. God is waiting on us, my brothers and sisters, because we can have confidence in him. That whatsoever, that, listen, that we can have confidence in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, and that's his will, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he said to do it. That's a guarantee that that's his will. He said to do it. And if we do what he says to do, we have no doubt of whether or not it is according to his will. Now look at the rest of this now. And if we know that he hear us, if we know that he hear us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. We know it. We know it. That's his word. We know it. He will hear our prayer, my brothers and sisters. And guess what? He will answer. He will answer. Check it out. The word in the Bible says, he hear us. That's a word. It doesn't mean he hears us. It says that he hear us. That's what's written in the word. Well, when he said he hear us, it means that means he's continuously hearing us. That's what it says. That's what John is saying. And if we keep on praying these prayers, if we keep on doing these things, these four principles, my brothers and sisters, guess what? God will hear us. And when God hear us, brothers and sisters, he will do what he said he will do. What did he say? Let's go back to where, he, where, where it is now. What did he say? What did he say? Second Chronicles 7, 40. He said what? What does he say? When, when he hears, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. God said, if we have confidence in his word, 
his word and the ability of his word to accomplish what he sent it to do. If we do these four principles, he said he will hear us. And if he hear us, he will forgive our sins and he will heal our land. My brothers and sisters, I hope you get this and understand this. God is waiting on us. The believer in this modern time, God is waiting on us. When we do what he asks us to do, he will do what he has promised to do. The world is in need of Jesus. The world needs a touch from God. And we are his ambassadors, his vessels, his instruments here on the earth. So we are the ones who are responsible to get the word of God into the lives of people to make a petition to God on behalf of the people so that God could come and act for the people. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We praise you for everything that you said to us through your word. I pray, Lord God, that those who are watching and listening, those who receive it through shares or however they received it, that, Lord God, Father, it was something that helped them in their Christian journey. Help them to understand your word a little better. Help them to have a little more boldness and confidence in the fact that they can pray to you, a God who hears. That we, Lord Father, will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we will come boldly before your throne, petitioning on behalf of those who are here on the earth, who are experiencing trials and tribulations, conflicts and, and sickness and disease. Lord God, Father, we pray for each and every one of them. I pray for my brothers and sisters who were with us last week as we feasted on your word, that Lord God, you will do something special for them, that you will drop a nugget of wisdom and knowledge into their lives, that you will bring a miraculous change in something that is going on that they are concerned about, so that you, Lord Father, could be magnified. And Lord God, I pray right now. I pray for those, Lord God, who are watching this either today or some of the day later in the week who don't have a relationship with you, and who know deep in their heart of hearts that they are not your people and they are not called by your name. But they just happen to be tuned into this right now and got a chance to hear what you are saying for these times so that your people will understand. I pray, Lord God, Father, that they will submit themselves to you right now. And they will say, Lord, I want to be one of your people. I want to be called by your name. Because, Lord Father, you know just like I know, a lot of the people who sit down in churches all around the place, Lord God, they're really not your people. Some are there for all different types of reasons, for social reasons, for family reasons, and all the different kind of reasons. But, Lord God, they're not really your children as yet. But I pray, Lord God, as this message went forth today, that some of them will stop and say, I want to be a child of God. I want to be called by his name. I want to be a vessel and instrument that he would use to help others to understand this good news, this good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has died to save this, the people from their sins and who is out there with his arms open wide saying, Father, forgive them, Father, forgive them. And they will see, you will say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I believe that you sent Jesus Christ into the world, that he was dead, crucified, and buried. He was raised from the dead, and now he's sitting on your right hand, ever interceding for me. Oh, Lord God, Father, hear their prayers right now. As they pray this prayer, Lord, forgive them. They will confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and they will, Lord Father, submit to your authority and make you their God. If you're out there and you pray this prayer, and you mean it from your heart that you want to give the, your life over to Jesus Christ so that you will be able to have the title, his people, and have the attachment to your name, ambassador of Christ, called by his name. Just push the button, the heart button or the other buttons, and let us know that you have made a decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Today is your day. This is for you right now, my brothers and sisters. This is for you right now. God wants to use you. And God is waiting on us. May God have a blessing.
for those of you who tuned in this morning to hear this word, I pray that God has touched you with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Don't forget, keep on sharing it. Keep on sharing it with others so that they will get a chance to hear this word as well. I am nothing but the vessel of God and the instrument of God. And may God bless you all this week. In Jesus' name, amen.